to Berlin, Germany for the Amazon European Masters knockout stage where we are looking into the sole Ultra League representative versus the only Prime League team left to skirmish it out in a best of five. PDW and Big are their last hope for the region and one of them will be eliminated today. My name is Colleen and I'm here with Trouble and Dagda. First of all, welcome Dagda and what is the European Master Studio right now? I know. Now? I mean, look, it's good to be back, right? Because, like, I kind of started my budding career in Europe with EU Masters back in 2018, so it kind of feels like a return back to my baby. It's good to be home. It's definitely good to have you here. Um, though we are starting with a new day, we do have to look back at what happened yesterday, because, Trouble, let's be fair, it was... A bit of a surprise what happened there. Uh, it wasn't for my heart, though, because my heart knew the prediction was going to come through. Fnatic Ryzen obviously went in with not many high expectations. Of course, the NLC hasn't been performing the best. Their best performance has been in spring 2021, where BTX made it all the way to finals and lost to Carmine Corp. But no one expected the Fnatic Ryzen train to come through. They made it all the way through planes, through groups, to quarterfinals, and now semifinals in a pretty decisive fashion. Yeah, let's have a look at the bracket to give you more of a visual idea what is happening exactly in that bracket. Yesterday, we saw Movistar Rising Fnatic Rising fighting it out in the first ever best of five in the quarterfinals. I need to mention it again. And today, we are looking at the other side of the bracket. It's going to be Big versus PDW. And that is a interesting matchup stylistically because these are two teams that love to fight it out in a bit. Yeah, I mean... I'm an LPL man. I love teams who love to fight. I'm so ready for this. So series. used to it. <laughs> <laughs> but also talking about fights, we saw a lot of things happening as well yesterday. We already mentioned it. A big surprise. Movistar not making it further. LVP looked very strong, and you already said it yesterday. Trouble. Every time LVP rises to the occasion, they seem to fall down when it matters the most. I think it's the pick your poison kind of moment here, right? Because the Spanish region, the Spanish viewers, the Spanish fans should be so happy they're getting three teams into quarterfinals. It's like, wow, we have the quantity, right? We have three quarterfinals out of three. For the love of God, one of them has to make it through <laughs> to the semifinals, right? And one of them has already fallen on the first hurdle. And it has sort of been the history with a lot of the uh, Superliga teams that they just fall right before the finish line. And I think it's very important to mention that when looking at best of five, is always good to see what team adapts the most. And in my eyes, that was Fnatic. Yeah, they came in so well prepared for this series. Focus down on that bottom lane. Make sure you're shutting down Duel. Duel, for me, was one of the biggest roaming supports that we had in the EU Masters. So the fact they completely disrupted that train of thought meant that Fnatic Rising were just able to take over the game and stop Movistar from enacting their game plan. I'm just really surprised to see that, evolve, that Fnatic Rising has evolved. I've seen them for two years now into the NLC. I never expect them to come here. And I think a big part of that has to be Delord. I think their drafts were absolutely on point. They were 100%. managed to shut 100%. down that mid-jungle synergy from Movistar Rising and they played through that bot side of the map. And every single time they would adapt to the uh, with the ban so easily, banning the cannon, banning the rise, grabbing something roaming for themselves, grabbing the leasing for playmaking. I feel that was a fanatic rising to be feared going into the semi-finals because they seem to be adapting in the situation so fast. Yeah, and I think the big one for that is that cannon took on. Like, the Marky looked unbelievable on that cannon pick. So the fact that he's trying to take that off the board, adapting throughout the series. I love seeing teams that are able to take that and run with it because it's going to be crucial as you go through playoffs. Yeah, and we'll have to see who they'll be facing, but that is something for Sunday. We do have to focus first on what we saw yesterday. And Dagda, there was a particular person that you pointed yeah. out. You were like, I'm so happy to see that we have supports that roam around the map. Yeah, and Rooks was the big one for me, right? We just talked about how they shut down Venzer and Duel. That was to unlock Rooks. The Relp, in particular, in game number three, was phenomenal. I think in game three and game four, he had like 100% kill participation on like 10 kills pre-10 minutes. It was nuts. And I was so glad to see him having that impact towards the top lane, getting out, taking over vision, and most crucially, impacting that mid lane as well. And it's interesting you pick up the Relp because it is something we mentioned yesterday when we were looking at this draft. What is that Rel going to do? I mean, there were five champions on the side of Movistar Riders with big dashes. That Rel technically, in the later stages of the game, into the team fights, should have been able to do absolutely nothing because everyone had an evade tool to get away from her ultimate. But I think the fact that the bot lane of Fnatic Riser was so uh, strong, the fact that Beam was finding this leads on the bot side and locking rocks into the map, and then finding the picks early on to the point where Rel, not only was she relevant, but she was really scary. Yeah, and this is something I'm going to be keeping my eyes on throughout EU Masters playoffs. I feel like that mid-jungle support is is so important in the current meta. Unlocking your support, getting them active on the map, and making sure you're winning out across the board. Today, we're gonna focus on something else. Uh, it's gonna be big for his PDW, and we're gonna be 
going more extensive into that later on. Um, something we've talked about a lot in this series, uh, and that's the last thing we're going to talk about, <laughs> is um, they are, has been showing an immense growth throughout this tournament. It's, it's incredible what we've seen from him. He stepped into the shoes of none other than the veteran Febiven, and it's just so difficult to see all that experience of Febiven leaving Fnatic Rising <laughs> and the pressure of stepping into his shoes, right? And in his first game, Ox said it yesterday as well in the NLC. He played Seraphine. He's like, guys, I'm just here to press my shields and get some, you know, roots down and then stun. Maybe people taunt people and all that jazz. But we've seen in the groups him evolving completely, bringing out things such as the Renekton, the set, the rise, things that complement. Maxi speaks so well. The Renekton and the set with the Nidalee can do wonders, but they didn't stay there. He keeps evolving. We saw in his quarterfinal yesterday bringing out such interesting picks, such as the Silas. And I feel like when we talked to Pride as well, he said, we trusted him. He wanted to play the Silas. He wanted to blind Silas and play it into the LeBlanc, and we trusted him. And you see things that can roam the map and impact the Rift very heavily with the Twisted Fate and the Rise. And of course, the Silas that he absolutely brawled the heck out of Movistar Riders with. Yeah, especially that Twisted Fate for me was a big one. Yeah. When you look at Kenzuke, how strong he's been on that pick, to be able to take it away and beat them at their own game was so impressive by Fnatic Rising. And as you said, a large portion of that was from that mid lane, having that Romy mid to take over the game. Although we do have to look at what happened exactly in the quarterfinals, I want to dive a bit deeper, at least you wanted to dive a bit deeper into the drafting. I mean, it's something we spoke about a lot yesterday, but I think there are some good takeaways when we come into these quarterfinals and like know what to expect from these teams. I mean, of course, we only have a very small sample. That is correct. Only in one quarterfinal and one best of five. And I think you are a big expert when it comes to defense because in the LPL, they said, what, minute one? Maybe yeah, before yeah. minute one? I mean, I like the 30 second ones, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are the better ones, yeah. right? When you actually don't have any spells yeah. to participate in. But I feel like Fnatic Rising found the correct button, and that is team fighting. Uh, we saw it from Movistar Riders as well. The Cannon, for example, such a big tool into closing out areas and decimating your opponents. Pride mentioned the Gangplank as well. He's like, I'm just pressing the button every three minutes and just winning these team fights versus the Kalista. Yeah, and that was massively important. I mean, we kind of hit on a little bit there. The Marquee having this cannon was so impactful, flashing in, getting these big engages in game number one. But then we saw that taken off the board and we got much more comfort coming through for Fnatic Rising. When being is firing all cylinders as well in that bot lane and picks like the Varus, it really did feel like there was just no real answer for Mobby Star Riders when they got to those team fights. I feel at the end of the day, ever since the Elemental Dragons have come into the Rift, it has been about them. It has been about acquiring the soul and and at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, if you're not 10k gold ahead, you're going to have to eventually team fight for that soul point or soul itself. And at the end of the day, if you've got the better team fighting comp and it's even ground, you're going to be the one that's most likely going to be coming up on top. And um, as we can see behind us as well, Kennen. You called him an electric rat, I think. Yeah, in our... the lightning rat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is the it a dangerous mess? Whatever you want, you know. <laughs> the electric yordle. Let's, let's keep it like. It creates <laughs> such a huge field where you can't walk through. If he gets the right flank, everyone's decimated by the damage. You see the rise that has endless priority in the mid lane and then pushes into the side lanes. And of course, we have the gangplank. Pride said it. All you have to do is place that ultimate correctly, and then the opponent ADC if they're immobile, they can't do much. What is crazy to me is that all of these three champs don't necessarily win their lane. They just like, they show what they can do <laughs> just by moving around the map. I mean, looking at the game, you mentioned this ultimate, Cannon is ultimate, uh, Rise's presence, and also his insane scaling. Yeah, and I think as Georgia kind of hit on, like, one of the big things that you look at is going to be these team fights. Because when I've looked at EU Masters, there hasn't been the best teams at, like, cross mapping properly or kind of opting into these 1 3 1s. Wave management isn't quite there. So when you're opting into a lot more of these dive heavy compositions, picks like Gangplank, picks like Cannon that do really well with these compositions that are running into you start to rise up in priority, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Ah, starting to rise up in priority. I <laughs> see what the you did there. In, you know? <laughs> um, rising to the occasion is going to be our next series as we are getting ourselves ready for a big first PCW. And I think it's a bit of a do or die moment for both of these teams. I mean, they're both the last hope for their region. One of them will be eliminated of the tournament. Um, and I think big is the one that we're looking at the most here, uh, Trouble, as they are the ones who are able to get a second European Masters title. They already are holding one trophy from previous years, but I feel coming here, it's more about quality over quantity for both of these regions. The Prime League came into the groups with three teams, they're only left with one, but that one is set to take it all, all the way to the finals, alongside the likes of Misfits Premier and the champions currently, Carmen Corp. Yeah, and then on the other side, it's PDW. It's a team that wasn't necessarily expected to be in European Masters, knowing that in spring, they 
just miss European Masters qualification. Now they're here, they're in a quarterfinal, and they're their sole representative once again of the Ultra League. Yeah, I mean, even like finishing fourth, managing to take that first possession in that uh, Ultra League final. Like these guys, you weren't really thinking they were going to make it the whole way, but now here they are facing up against Big. And when you look at like the Poland versus Dock region, I mean, Poland's kind of got the beat, right? 3 0 when you look at playoffs over the last yeah. three years. And even when you look at summer 2020, right? You've got Ego Rogue who beat out Mouse, Ego Rogue beat down Gamer Legion as well in the finals to take the whole thing. So a results-based analysis, I know where I'm going. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you mentioned the name, right? That was the Agoro, where four out of five players then advanced into the LEC. That was a super team coming out of the Ultra Liga. Definitely. And they haven't necessarily seen any major success since that 2020 summer final. And I feel like BDW, they've got a bunch of members, uh, especially Chai from Pompa as well, who came third in the previous, uh, in the previous split in Ultra Liga. So we just have to wait and see how much they can evolve through the tournament. Now, it is something we've spoken about when the drafting film. Team fighting is king. Well, when you look at that, both these teams, what do they love the most, Trouble? <laughs> I mean, they love to team fight, and PDW like to take it more slow and steady. They're, I'm sorry, Dagda, but they're more of an LCK type of style. <laughs> they'll draft the Orianas, they'll draft their Lissandras, and when they have hit these item power spikes, they just don't miss when it comes to team fighting. Yeah, I think the big thing for these guys, though, is looking at the early game, how well they can use picks like the Ziggs, if they can get Cubit out of that bot lane, start to roam around and use this mid-jungle support that we were kind of touching on earlier on, this is heavily playing towards that mid lane and trying to get these big early wins so when we get towards the team fights, they're just whacking you with the wallace. And I feel like on the other side, when you have someone like Big and Rika, it's a different story, right? He likes to smack the lane and completely leave, maybe playing towards the side lane later on with the likes of an Aurelia or a Silas, and then starting to bleed out his lead into other lanes. So we have BDW, where they like to play towards the mid lane, playing around Chai, and I don't blame them, and then Rika, who likes to, put his, uh, to bleed his pressure around the map. I'm picking up some things here, and that is that we kind of need to look at the mid lane. Ah, oh, maybe. maybe a little. <laughs> maybe a little. <laughs> I mean, especially Chai. I think Chai is a very interesting player because, I mean, he's showing what he is capable of. And in a moment, we also have his stats. Those are ridiculous ones. I mean, I think everyone's eye was on Chayek when Pompa came into the 2020 Spring Tournament, uh, EU Masters, of course. And yes, they didn't manage to make it that far, but everyone had their finger on Chayek. They're like, this guy is evolving so much. This guy is so young. Who is this guy? We need to put our finger on him. And honestly, it looks like he's a different beast. Yes, he looked good on a losing team, but now that he's on a winning team, he looks even better. Yeah, and I love how they can kind of rely on him when it comes towards like roaming towards the objectives and starting things off there. Because oftentimes we do get that mid and jungle working with the support as well. But I mean, this guy has been so crucial in getting that ball roll. And when we see him on these team fighting carries as well, the Orianas, the, uh, well, we saw a little bit of Lissandra, but certain the Silas as well. These are the big picks that I'm keeping my eyes on to see if he can have those pop off moments. Should they just shut down mid lane or is it that too easy? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's easy to shut down a guy that has the least deaths in the yeah. whole of group stage, uh, but definitely it would have to be a point of contention, right? Put him on something that is very vulnerable, something that if he pushes a little bit further forward, he can get punished on and get something on Rika that can potentially maybe snowball. Yeah, I am also terrified of, like, if you end up giving him something that's a little bit more shove heavy, like, say, if we see Rika going back towards the Silas, they get mid prial, they start to take over the map. That has felt where PDW are most comfortable. I mean, you talk about Rika and, uh, and Chaik in the mid lane. Do we need to talk about Rika or do we need to talk about Akabana and Rika? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Akabana and Rika, because I have seen this man like three camp bot side and then just walk through mid. He's just like, I'm just going to gank here real quick, get you priority there, Rika, so you can help me off of Scuttles. And this has been so important for this team as well. I think um, Akabana is really good at understanding how his lanes are set up and allowing Rika to have those moments on the side where he can take over. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like he's a monster when it comes That's to... That's not a mistake, right? No, he's a monster. <laughs> Okay. Rika is a monster when it comes to the early game because you see his gold difference at 15 is almost close nuts. to a thousand. He likes to snowball his lane, go towards the side and get more uh, wins for his team through that. And you see how, yes, his team participation is a little bit lower than Chayek because he plays technically a little bit later on on a side lane, might find a kill on his own, but what the heck is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. 22.8 <laughs> KDA on a... On a 
player that plays Oriana and Lissandra and likes to chill back is just mind-blowing. The fact that this guy yeah. likes to play it slow and steady, no one's allowed to shut him down. And such a large portion of that is coming from his Galio. He has a 33 KDA on the Galio. It's been absolutely insane over what? the two games. <laughs> so keep your eyes on that to see how that one works out. But as well, that kill participation I want to highlight is alongside Trouble. Like, this guy, they play so heavily towards him. They look to unlock him, and then he becomes a beast in those team fights. So I'm not surprised to see that high of a kill participation. And it's interesting, though, because I was looking at his stats as well. I saw a first blood percentage of 43%. <laughs> but then I looked further in the stats of PDW. And who do you think also has 43% first blood participation? I'm going to give it to you, Trouble. Who do you think I thought I'm going to guess Rika? No, it is even better. It is the support. Yeah. And you've already been praising supports on the side of Fnatic Rising, but we could have seen something here as well on the sides of PDW. Yeah, I think we're going to see a huge amount from Qubit. And that's why I'm keeping my eyes on this draft into things like the Ziggs. See if we still get that coming through for PDW. Because if you do, expect these heavy roaming supports, Nautiluses, the Rakans, these kind of things to set up for that mid lane. Um, it is time to start the brawl between these two teams. Our expectations have been set. Will the Ultra League representative PDW repeat history, or can the Prime League's big break the spell? We're heading over to our caster duo of the day, Hip, Rain, and Foxdrop. Uh, what are you guys expecting from the draft? Hello, everybody. Um, I feel that's more of a Foxdrop question than me. <laughs> so what are we expecting from the draft, Foxy? Honestly, I mean, the guys covered it on the desk pretty well. I like the engaged support callout. That's going to be a lot of fun. I think Silas in general is going to have some higher priority and also playmaking, uh, you know, champions like Thresh, Lee and all that kind of lovely business. A lot of fun in the meta we're seeing right now, and this series will be no yeah. different. I, it's, it's interesting as well because, you know, yesterday was quite a brawly game. There was a lot of fighting. We had a lot of fighting teams here in the E-Masters, but, you know, Georgia did hit on it on the desk. Is you know, PDW and Big, you know especially PDW, they do play a little bit more slow, but when it comes to team fighting, they are dominant. They are, they're very clean, clean very crisp. Yep. So that's something we've got to kind of keep our eyes on as well as, you know, are they going to take these games a little bit slower? And maybe that's an avenue for big to play for is, you know, if they play a little bit accelerated, maybe they can push this into a place where PDW can answer. Because to me, yesterday's game, when you look at Fnatic Rising, they won through recognizing, you know, where the enemy team is weak and just punishing that by constantly, you know, denying them from getting their bot lane ahead. Yeah. You know, if you're big right now, maybe just go, we're just going to play a really good early game and just beat you out before you get your opportunity to scale. We'll see what the champ selects look like obviously there's been a big um excuse the pun there's been a large <laughs> emphasis on things like the cannon and the gangplank you know champions yeah. that can impact large spaces for this team fighting remember this is the ultra league uh, or poland's uh, last team and it's the dark region or the prime league's last team as well Yep, and we've seen both these regions have a lot of success in the past in E-Masters. This time last year, it was Poland that took it all. And I think you have to go all the way back to 2019 before Germany took it, which was big, actually. It was yeah. the exact organization we're about to see today. And, you know, I, I just think that spring was not good for Poland, especially. So far, it's not been good either. You've got one team in the quarters. That's not what you expect out of the Polish region. And for Germany as well, it's been a little bit quiet since they last won both these uh, both these regions. It means a little bit more than just this pure uh, quarterfinal here because they are really looking to prove that their regions are actually still got what it takes to tussle with the best of them. Like the LFL and, and the Super League, like they, they're so good right now. They're, they're just completely like accelerating out of orbit and it, other regions are struggling to catch up. Yeah, it does feel like the LFL and the Super League are like, you know, the, the front runners and everyone else is just trying to, you know, show that they have that relevance with them. Uh, just a quick stat as well. Both of these teams went five and one in their groups. So, you know, similar score lines, only dropping a singular game during those that double round robin in the group stages. Uh, PDW were second seed from their group and it was Movistar Riders that they lost out to. Big were first and they beat out Fnatic Rising. And yesterday, Fnatic Rising beat out Motherstar. Yeah. So, you know, if, if PDW win here, or uh, sorry, if Big win here, they go, yep, Group C was the better group. Um, or, you know, PDW win, it, it could show that maybe. Maybe we're overestimating Movistar a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, we're yeah. into chaps tonight. We'll find out what everything's going to be looking. We're starting with Big on that blue side, PDW on the red. See what's going to get banned away and picked up here is the Aurelia is the first ban of the bad face. All right, Rika's a pretty good Aurelia player. 
Uh, no real surprise to see that one taken away. Melnick as well has been playing a lot of carries as well in the meta. Like there's there's a few there's a few tanky options and more like team setting up champions. That's not really Melnick's wheelhouse. Out of the six games he's played, only one of them wasn't a carry when he was playing the NAR. So I would expect a lot of big damages coming through from uh, from that top side for PDW. That's more where they play towards. Seeing this affiliate span as well, I think it's pretty interesting. This is a champion which uh, both these AD carries play both OD and KDW play this. Uh, but I would expect a bit more focus on the Thresh, especially because PW Cubby loves to play that. He's really good on the Thresh. It's a great first pick. It's a great, uh, yeah. you can throw into so many situations. And we'll see how this draft develops. All right, well, one final ban coming out. The Thresh has been oh. left open, which is pretty key. Same with that Rakan as well, another champion, which is... Had very he heavy priority. I know, I'm just thinking about things that are open. You got the Zinzao, so you got the Viego, yeah. you got the Fresh, <laughs> you got the Kennen, you got the Gangplank. Lee Sin yep. is going to get picked up for Bruness. And if you cast your Oof. mind back to the first week of uh, the group stages here at the Amazon EU Masters, Bruness's Lee Sin was clean. Yep. And there it is, there's the carry top for us right there, the Camille. That gets banned away from uh, from PW a lot. I think it's the most banned champion. Uh, it doesn't slip yeah. through the draft a lot, so Melnick's going to snap that one up, pair it with the Zinzal. Very strong 2v2, very good fighting, brawly style champions, and very strong uh, in the side lane with the scaling on that Camille as well as uh, as this game will develop. And I will yeah. see how big one who uh, want to return like with this it. one. It is going to be the Silas and the Ooh. Shen as well. Okay. So, I really like this Silas because Rika could potentially look for something like a Galio that would pair up really well. And the Silas preemptively able to steal away that ultimate and, you know, match that global. And then you've obviously got the Shen as well to come in. I actually really like this now. It's yeah. going to make... It's Big probably had a rough idea that they were going to lock a, a, something like a Galio in here. And now, you know, they've got to think about it, but they are still going to go for this Galio wow. matchup. So Rico opt opting into what I would say is probably a little bit of a harder one. Yeah. But obviously still big benefit to the team on that front. I think it's a, it's so far it's been a really interesting draft. Like you've had more more folks on the bot side from these first bands, obviously like five out of these six bands are targeted towards uh, the bot laners here. And honestly, what Colors brought out here with the Shen, I think this is really smart because I, I you know, Color is someone who has defaulted a little bit more towards the more team orientated top laners. Like Orn is his most played champion so far in the Masters. And I think Shen also fits that bill a little bit. And it's something you can just not have to worry too much about topside. It's really hard for you to lose to Camille as well. You can kind of just play it chill, be a bit graceful there. And you can match her in the side and then just TP back in with, with your ulti to the team fights if you want to. Plus, you also have a really good answer to that, to that Galio, as you were saying. Uh, so it's almost like they kind of thought maybe they will pick Galio here and we'll have an answer to that one. Um, but so far, I love what PW's done. I think Silas also has a uh, great, great ult to steal in that Galio ult. Doesn't struggle in lane either. And more bot focus bans here in the second phase. Thresh has been taken away. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tristana go as well. Kedui's yeah. favorite champion. And you're really pinching bot lane pool right now. I don't feel like Big are going to be banning that though, so we'll see what they try to opt into as their ban. Just for kind of racking my brain through what's been left open. As you go for the side, but they leave the like... card open again. <laughs> like literally, what ADCs are, are, are available? <laughs> You've generally I mean, got like one, two, three, Tristana. four, five, six, seven. You've got seven ADC bans right now if you count six. You know, seven bot lingers gone. <laughs> I mean, Ed, like, assuming this isn't a Tristana ban, and let's be real, this is probably a Tristana ban, unless there's something we have completely slept on and forgotten about. It looks like, yeah. don't want to give Ken away the Tristana when everything's been trimmed down that much. You need to force him off comfort, otherwise they are just going to have a fantastic time in the bot side. Now remember, this Galio is technically flexible, so it can go into that support role if they want to, uh, if, you know, they want to take the Galio out of that Silas lane. So something we do need to keep in mind here, so yeah. keep in mind whether or not they decide just to lock an AD carry or a support up. But I think with the Rakan open, yeah, yeah they are going to pick that one up. But if I'm Chayak, I'm rubbing my hands together because you got the pick of the litter when yes, it comes down do. to the side of the ult to steal. Yes, you do. And thematically, this Rakan makes a lot of sense for Big. So that did have to pick it up despite the benefit it is going to give Chayak. you got a lot of jumping forward right now from the side of Big. Camille's going to jump in. Zin's going to jump in. Galio combined with Camille as well. It's just it's a combo you... you yeah. Tell us all this time, be like Javan, Javan Galio as well. And then Rakan just goes in as well. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful combination right here. So you've got a little bit more of kind of like the, the, the stopping, the, the breaks coming through here from PW as a response. With that Braum, you know, Braum is good at denying these engages or at least slowing them down a little bit. 
and we'll see what Cubby decides to go for. Ash is available, but having such a low mobility carry is going to be kind of hard to navigate in these team fights against Big. It's going to be locked in, and to be honest, like once you're down to literally the ninth choice of AD carries, there's not much to what go is for that? here. I mean, it's like, like Samira, Fane, Draven, Kaiser. Samira, Kaiser, Draven. I think would be good here actually if you want yeah, to. Yeah, actually. I think Kaiser's probably actually, the best Actually, Kaiser's bit. really nice here. There's a lot of diving forward from Big, and you know the range. You know, and like you said, there's a lot of zone control. Kaiser could be a big one. I am not a fan of the vein if they start together. Actually, going for the Jin, so so it can play a little bit further back while the team jumps in forwards. Yeah. What do you make of that pick? Is that just we are so trimmed for <laughs> the next best option, or do you think you know there's actually a good game plan with this Jin pickup? I think Jin's not bad actually because like Jin doesn't have to get involved in the fights like he, like up up close and dirty right. Like he can stay really far back with his curtain call, and then when the rest of the team team jumps forward, he can still contribute without having to go up and get those auto attacks through. He's still got the deadly flourish as well, and so it's a lot less focus on Big on Kedui uh, in that bot side, which to be honest really makes sense for how Big playing general they don't tend to play a huge amount towards bot side melanic you know and rika uh, the, the solo lane specifically is where big finds most of their damage it's where they put most of their attention uh, and so yeah i think honestly thematically speaking jin's a perfectly fine pick and you didn't have a huge amount of options really did you so i think as far as it goes you'll be happy with that one <laughs> so let's talk early game what are we expecting from both of these teams in the early game we'll start with pdw you know they've got they've got the silas they've got the shen yeah. They've got the least sin from Bruness. Like, what is PDW's early game plan here? I reckon for PDW, like, you've got to be quite careful of your, your lane matchups, like, specifically topside. So I think Camille plus Zin is going to be really scary to deal with. Uh, but the Galio might be something you can punish as well. So if you do want to play more towards the mid side, get that push uh, with the Silas, unlock Silas from the lane and get him moving around, especially post six. You can shove the shove the wave in and then like still Galio's ulti and look for a roam. Something like that will be beneficial. Uh, whereas on the other side, like if you are, you know, if you're big, then you absolutely want to play through. Like you, you want to do something, you, you want to get, either get Manlik snowballing, which is kind of tough versus the Shen, because he's, he's going to build tanky, he's going to have that W up. So that's going to be a little bit difficult. Or you just want to unlock her from the lane so she can move move around and start chasing down other people. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting lane, especially this mid side. I'm really excited to see, you know, how Rika can actually navigate this because, you know, Shai can stop him from ulting and then steal his ultimate. And you know, if he yeah. steals the ult in the lane and just walks off, pings have to go like down like absolutely crazy because post level six, the last thing you want is a Silas slamming into your team as everyone dives in forward six. Yeah. I think we're going to be in for a pretty spicy one. And, you know, we hinted that, you know, PDW typically a team, but in, at least in the second half of the round robin, the second week of the group stage, we're playing a little bit slower, playing a little bit more reserved. I think from this champ select, that's probably not going to be the case. I think we might have a bit of a bloodbath, Foxy, as we uh, load through onto the rift for our first game of this best of five. This is PDW Poland's last hope. This is the Dark League's last hope in big. It's going to be a very spicy series as well. Both these teams, number one seed coming out of their regions. Two very, very accomplished regions in the EU Masters. Looking to really prove that they do have what it takes to, to hold up against the likes of the Spanish Leagues and the, and the French Leagues. We've really, really taken a step up the past, past year or so, honestly, in EUM. And stylistically speaking, you know, these two teams, big... Very good early game, very good at closing out. Big have not lost a single game that they've been ahead at 15 minutes. And they're very good at getting ahead at 15 minutes as well. Whereas, as you mentioned, PW tend to be a little bit slower. Might have to do some adaptations, though, in this series if you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this German team. Yeah, the early is going to be a very big thing, I think. Um, and I've got to stop saying the word big. I, this is, I've casted this team for how many years now? And I always use the word big to talk about things. Are you doing the Vodafone Giant series as well? Yeah. Oh, because then everything's yeah. going to be a giant issue for you, isn't it? I know. <laughs> God. It's just, it's just how the cookie crumbles. I'm actually very excited for that one. But I'm also yeah. very excited for this one. I think this is going to be in a really, really fun game. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really fun series. And I think, you know, it is... It's really that regional pride thing because the NLC were able to take out one of the Super Leaguers teams. So it kind of trims down. Now, I think there's two French teams left and two Spanish teams left here. And obviously only one, one from the Dark and one from Poland. So really all to play for. Yeah, absolutely. 
Teams have taken into their lane assignments as expected and uh, no early trading or scrapping to kick us off. It's a pretty rough one as far as the uh, Braum lane goes into the Rakan because he just dashes away before he can get the, the blow stacked up. Yeah, I'm just going to be chilling down that bot side. I don't expect a huge amount of action to go through there. Speaking of though, a little bit in the top sides. I really like Shen's choice of skin. Surgeon Shen with the pink chroma, absolutely beautiful. He's also got that <laughs> ignite, which I like that's spicy. So you, you see that every now and then because Shen does have a surprising amount of damage. And I think maybe because of this the inclusion of this ignite, I mean just look at that. There you orbs. go. Yeah, it's crazy. it's like before you get that hit off before the, the shield comes through from Camille, and it's actually so crazy. And if, if you ever go topside with Bruness, now the kill potential is is much higher, actually. And I think, to be honest, part of, the, part of the reason why you want Ignite on Shen in this matchup is just in case the Camille takes Ignite as well. Because if she has Ignite yeah. and you don't, then you're in a bit of a pickle. See, so Color able to get his uh, Shroud down in time. Covered already a little bit annoyed with the uh, Rakan bot lane and how slippery it is. So Rika has to just his punch away and lose a little bit of that pressure he'd started to build up for himself as a uh, cover. Just playing interrupt and making sure that Akabane can't pick up this top lane crab. It means Akabane's going to have to move through the mid lane and they're fully aware where he's going to be on this pathing as, uh, oh my uh -oh. word, Melanick, you're pretty low. Brunesse luckily doesn't have flash. Uh, well, Color doesn't have flash. Brunesse does. How cheeky is Brunesse feeling right now? Is he feeling cheeky? No, he's not. He's going for Krug. I think that's crugs. too cheeky. I <laughs> yeah, think he, that's... Was, he was somewhat thinking about it. He's just going to take that Krug. Crag away. Got the uh, got the top side scuttle from the Rome from Kirby. Thank you very much, Mr. Braum. As it looks now, oh, it's basically we're basically mirroring the plays right here. I don't think you can go for a dive. It's way too early for that right here, especially against the Braum and Ash. That glacial bonus is definitely going to come in a little bit tricky for you. But if he face checks, you might not have to dive. Ah. Oh, spotted out by I the. Didn't see. Shot. I haven't seen Akaban yet though. Ooh, they don't, still yeah, they don't know where he is. I think they might have saw the camp, though. I'm not sure. Because he was in the bush, but I don't know if they saw the camp. He's reset anyway, so yeah, looks like the game plan's <laughs> not going to be go for anything here. I think both teams recognizing that either way it could be risky and there's no point coin flipping the lane. So we're going to, you know, continue to have it a little bit more chill and relax. These level sixes obviously being raced towards from these mid sides. And that's probably when we're going to see a dive somewhere. I'd assume bot side. Speaking of, got a little bit of attention here. Huge minion wave for PW working their favor in this trade. I'm not going to go for the extended fight right there. Very smart from Kedri and Siaz. Recognize a lot of blue dudes down there. And they're going to hurt when they th throw little spells at you. And here comes Akaban. Yeah, they're going to flash in, force the flash out from OD. The Deadly Flourish lands in and covered. I think you might just be in trouble. The Ignite's burning. They find the knock-up onto OD now. The great block from the Brom is huge. Uh, and the reload, the Dancing Grenade almost gets it. First blood picked up for the side of Big. Kedari with the first blood. The first kill of our series here between Big and PDW. Perfect timing there from Akabane to go down bot. Doesn't keep clearing his jungle and instead makes the decision to go for the proactive play as that minion wave. We talked about how many blue dudes there were. That means they're pushing into big. They just walk a little bit too far forward right here. I'm not quite sure how Cub doesn't isn't able to... Yeah, he's, he's a little bit slow on the dash away. But in the end, he is just going to sacrifice his life here for Oddi. Ooh, yeah, you're right. That bouncing grenade was pretty close, actually. And <laughs> he gets a double kill on that one. Good start there for the German team. Remember, it gets kill. It gets more damage when it kills something. And, yeah. Uh, I believe champions count under that. Absolutely. Brunette's looking for Melanick, but Melanick has got the six and the hawk shot, so Brunette can't really do much more than just chunk out Melanick. So far, color doing okay in this lane. Doing really well. Yeah, this is like uh, you're basically just nullifying this lane if you're Shen. You can build tanky, and as, you, as you're seeing, he's getting a lot of health as well, which is great versus the true damage that comes through from Camille. And the fact that you can block auto attacks with your... Is it Spirit's Refuge? Is that what it's called? The, the, the Shroud, yes. the W from Shen? Yeah, it's Spirit's Refuge. Yeah. So it's not just good for auto attacks, but the fact that, that Camille has an auto attack empowered ability with her Q, you block that down as well, and that's, that's basically Camille's trade just down the toilet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly a really nice little matchup. Now, is there a point, though, where Camille just takes over this? 
Or do you think the Shen's actually able to absorb the pressure for longer or just actually indefinitely? What What is your, kind of your take on this top side? My assumption is that I don't think Camille's ever going to have like kill pressure necessarily on the Shen. Yeah. But I don't think that he'll he will also like she'll be able to walk up and like she'll be able to push in and she'll probably have the first movement out of the lane. So but Shen is more of like a reactive champion anyway. So it's not really a massive deal for him if he's not the first one to move around. He can just sit there and then use Stand United to join to join a fight. Um, but yeah. it's, it's it's mostly like you're just gonna be responding to it's not necessarily the lane itself you've got to worry about, but it's more what Melanick does when he leaves the lane. Yeah, it's going to be both of these guys have tier mat items and then just shoving waves and yep. then Color waits for the opportunity to ultimate and Melanick either is the one he's ulting on or Melanick's job will be to cancel it with a hook shot. Brunest making a play up in the top side, come jumping in, finds the kick. Melanick gets slowed down. Brunest with the insect. Color going to get jumped onto as Melanick is ignited here. Comes the taunt from the Galio. Both members knocked up. There's a good justice punch. And Brunette will pay the ultimate price. Slow down as the wind becomes lightning. The color will survive for now. It was a good play. Good flashy play from PDW there, but way too much when you don't have TP advantage. Chayek, no teleport in the mid lane. Rika having it up means he's going to get the response right there. It's decent just to go in and maybe get a little bit harassed, maybe even look to counter gank the Zin because you were pushing in. Colors minion wave is a lot bigger right here. So maybe just looking to protect him. But as you know, as you're getting into this and you really start going for the proper big play, you dedicate your W, you dedicate your flash. Like you've got no way out right here. Absolutely screwed. No answer if you're going that aggressive and someone's going to TP on top of your face. You're already committed too deep, and that's going to be a free kill for Big. That's their second kill as well. They got themselves a gold lead of a thousand built up, just under 10 minutes into the game. Big also were able to pick up that first dragon of the game, which is a pretty big one, just purely because Galio's ultimate is on a fairly lengthy cooldown. So, first of all, you deny yourself from having a Cloud Soul as an option, <laughs> which is always nice because no one wants that. But also, you know, just give it a little bit of tenability haste to a fairly lengthy ultimate early ranks. Yeah. Going to be nice, especially along with those lucidity boots as a... So it's getting pretty heavily chunked out by OD. Two minutes until this Ocean Drake comes up and we'll see if either team really wants to scrap around that. There's still that global threat of color. But the same can be said for Rika as well. So keep our eyes on all of this action as we get closer and closer towards the dragon. And that could be an avenue as well for Big to take advantage of PW. Let's say we get a contest on the next dragon and color Shen ults in. If Big are just like, you know what, that's cool. Go for it, take it. And Melnick stays topside. He could get like three or four plates by himself. Camille is so yeah. fast at taking tower plates, especially once you've got that Sheen, which is in Melnick's pocket. That might just be uh, an option, you know, just trade that away. And I think that definitely, uh, definitely could pay dividends for Big to get some more gold on that Camille and really start unlocking that top side. Got that Phage as well on this base as they are uh, whip on both of the junglers, but nobody's finished up their full items yet. A couple of tier two boots for the AD carries, getting a bit more speed built up for Kedawi. It looks like they might be looking for something here in the mid lane. Just wanted to try and get themselves some pressure. Obviously, Akabane with that Rift Herald, if they can force Chayak out of lane, they can put Maybe look to pick some plates up, but they may just hold that Rift Held to get themselves Dragon Control. Like a vein just doing a full clear of that red side jungle and now working his way downwards towards this dragon. So you can see that Big definitely are going to be wanting to play around this dragon. And PDW, well aware of that. They're also leaning their jungler down here. They're starting to move some of the vision in. It's not heavy vision by either side. But I think we're going to see that vision wall start to break out now. Yep. And with the timing of the waves as well, you got 30 odd seconds until Dragon spawns. You might get caught in this top river if you're color. He's gonna have to dash away. You've got enough time to do this though. We'll see whether PDW are able to get vision down. Since you've moved Rika and Akabane topside, now you move in the bot side, you move into that river, you get that vision, you sweep out the vision as well. And there's no contest. It's really smart right here from PDW as a response to get something on the map. This might just be an uncontested dragon. We'll see. It looks as though a lot of pings are heading towards topside. Not just now, but even like 30 seconds ago, they were already starting. You can see Rika's moving up as well. There is a ward, though, I believe, that Akabane is on. They know this is happening. They might just trade the dragon for a top dive. But PW smelling. Like... Oh, 
Ooh, the game plan was to uh, give up the dragon, but PDW, they, they kind of call the bluff here and actually don't start the dragon up. They get themselves the vision down, move up to make sure the color is covered, and now they can just move back into that area that they'd already pre-warded. Although it's now Big's turn to move through and clear out this vision. Sweep is up for Siaz and that Scuttlecrab is going to be doing dividends here for the side of PDW because yeah. they're losing a lot of that permanent vision in the area. Zodi, arrow charged up and ready to go down, so keep that in mind. That is always an option to them. It's quite hard to get lane control over the Galio just because of that justice, uh, not justice punch, big smash, big smash auto attack plus Winds of War. Yep. Definitely not wrong, especially once you get a few some a few levels in, you can actually just wave clear it out. Early on, it's not so much, and you can you can see how Chaika's had a lot of pressure. Ooh, he's got oh, out. what a kick! They're jumping in, they've got the quickness to try to buy some space. The Galio looking to come in, but they're unable to stop. The Shen ultimate is interrupted, and big of finding the kills is the curtain has been called on Chaik. He dodges one, eats the second, and that fourth shot already low. The deadly flourish forces the flash out, and Rika jumps in with a taunt. Chaik is caught out. They find the knockup, Akubane finds the kill, and it's five to none in the scores. The charge in the plate and the dragon, big are getting away with it all. Perfect, perfect start here from the German team. They're so good in the early game. One of the best early game teams we have here in EU Masters, and they're showing us just why. Their execution has been on point so far. And like you say, they're getting everything they want. There's only one plate left down bot side. They're gonna have two dragons here as well. Plus those five kills in pocket. Very good start from the number one seed coming out of Dark. Yeah, really nice start there. So it was a bit of action breaking up in the top lane, but I'll have a look at the fight again. This, I think, is just a bit of a mismatch in comps because PW go for the engage. But how good are Big at responding to engages here? Rakan jumps in, Galio jumps in. Like, what's your option, really? Like, it. You've got a lot of engaged tools on PDW, like you've got the Ash, you've got Lee Sin if he fancies going crazy like that. But it's just it's just not gonna work out for you. Like they just have such good responses from Big. That was just the perfect example right there. I don't think it's gonna get any easier. It's gonna be kinda tough for PW to find these fights. They have to get picks, which is probably what they thought they were gonna get in that situation, to be honest. But it's gonna be a little bit better than that. It's it's the big clusters of it's so hard to play as a big cluster into big. And like tight corridors like that are just that is where they this comp excels. You've got yep. the AoE taunts of the quickness, the AoE taunts of the Idol of Duran. You've got you know so much like CC and just zone control in small clump clumps. And it's the last thing you want to do is just group up as as a group. And again, PDW looking to group up here now. The quickness is up and available. Akabane already jumping onto cupboard and cupboard loses half of his health as Melanic is in the area. One thing I do want to know is topside. Really, really nice hex tech automate him in that last fight. Stopped the teleport from the Stan United from the Shen yeah. coming into the fight. As soon as Color wasn't there to come in with his own kind of zone control, that fight was completely doomed for PDW. And PDW recognizing Stan United on cooldown. The whole are bigger up here. So there's nothing they're going to be able to do on that front. They're just going to rotate the whole team into the mid side and secure this second Rift Tower for themselves and get another charge and potentially their second tower. Something didn't really touch on in draft was we've really been thinking about this Shen. You know what? I'm going to hold this point. There's the engage. There it is. They've got that stolen away Galio ultimate. Back of has got his own Galio in the pocket. The curtain has been caught and Brunesse needs to be oh so careful. Oh. Covered, he goes golden, but he's just going to get taken out by the Winds of War. Chayek rooted underneath the tower. They get themselves the tier one, the charge onto the tier two. And meanwhile, Color is just getting splattered by everyone. CS has to flash out. But Akabe should just be able to finish the job up as he secures himself the eight kill for the team. PDW haven't been able to st spill a drop of blood this game. And it's a disaster for the Polish team right here. Mentioned at the beginning of the day, Big are such a good early game team and they haven't lost a single game when they've been ahead at 15 minutes. So now 16 minutes in and they just don't put on the brakes. They had a great start and it's getting gr from great to greater with the way they're playing this game out here. So many kills, so many towers, two dragons in pocket as well. Man, this game is looking tough for the Polish team. It is looking 
incredibly tough right now. It's a massive uphill battle. We haven't replayed the fight once again. And again, it's just that big zone control. Sure, he can Galio well on the Galio, but he's kicked out. He can now just rejoin yeah. the fight of his own. Exactly. And he's jumped back in if you're big right here. It's just, at this point, you're also just a little bit too strong. If you're big, like, you, you just, yeah, bashing about with your wallet a little bit. But it's so hard for PW to find these fights. They keep trying to go for those engages. They keep trying to start the fights and maybe pick someone out of position or get a cheeky burst down on someone. And it's just not happening. It's just really, really not working. Big having perfect responses right here. They've got, like, the ultimate reactive team comp. And with Rakan, with Galio. And just, oh my goodness, look at... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 157 damage Ash to 2,000 damage Jin. Yeah. Yes, they are looking for him, but it's so hard to jump in when you don't have that vision. You didn't really know who was about, obviously, Akavane on a ward. But other than that, that is going to be the fourth tower going down to big and the gold lead growing bigger and bigger. It's getting massive, man. It's like 7,000 gold at this point. We're not even 20 minutes into the game. It's ridiculous. It's huge. It is. Some might say it's uh, Akabane. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love that emote. <laughs> I honestly want to keep my eyes on Ash as well in this game. You mentioned it, uh, that, that damage chart there at the end of the last fight. Ash didn't really do anything. She got the engage with the with her arrow, but didn't really contribute much as far as damage goes. And this is why well, 157 damage tells me that the Ash hour was the only thing. Yeah, for, genuinely uh, probably was. Offered. Yeah, it genuinely was maybe maybe a volley or, or something as well. Either way, yeah, probably didn't get like any or attacks off. But how how do you navigate these team fights? Like as Ash, you've got to you know play. I said oh. it would be difficult in draft, low mobility. You know, you've got so many people diving forward. How do you find those auto attacks, especially when you're behind like this? I don't think yeah, Odie's I mean, going to find much to work with. Kenry had a Gale Force in that fight. Odie didn't even have the full components for the Immortal Shield Bay. The Immortal Shield Bay has just been finished up for Odie. And I believe Kenry's probably been sitting on this serrated for a little bit at this point. So that collector getting closer and closer for Kenry is going to be scarier and scarier to handle the Jin as uh, he is actually going in for a reset. Now, Dragon is going to get secured. This is the third one for the side of Big. Yep. And we're looking at an Infernal Soul with a Collector Gin. <laughs> 8 and 0 right now. Massive gold lead. I think PDW are probably going to have to start thinking about game number 2. I think you're not wrong, Jakey boy. This is a tough one to bring back. You're definitely being put in the dirt right now. I'm not sure you can really claw your way back out of it. I think as well, if we look stylistically at how these teams put out wins, PDW specifically, do it through OD. OD uh, has been their superstar player. Chaik obviously has done great. I'm not trying to say already he's the only one, but now he, he's he's a, he's the main carry they rely on as the game goes on and in these team fights. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's set up for success in this game. I think as far as team comps go, he's going to find it really hard to contribute. That might just be the nail in the coffin, really, for PW in their in their win cons. Yeah, I completely agree. Rika able to start up the dive onto this Shen. Man, they're going to lock color in place. The Ashar does hit, and the tower's being tanked, so. Looks like that's going to be the dive completely done, though. Is our cupboard just blocking the fourth shot from Kedoui? Not going to find it. Or well, they may go for a deadly flourish. Oh, he went for it. He hit it, but unfortunately, deadly flourish does absolutely zero damage. Although to be fair, with a collector, if, yeah, it would have. If he had, if he had soul, I'd be dead. Yeah. he'd be dead. Yeah. But he doesn't, so you know, <laughs> they would have could have shit us, I guess. That's the point. Yeah, that's true. He just, just doesn't have it. To be fair, that so it looks like Shem was on a decent amount of health there. But you only need to put him, like, was it 5%? Is that the the threshold for collector to go on? I don't at now, because it, it, it's definitely been changed. I yeah. mean, yeah. the first nerf I remember to it was they stopped it from being able to collect on minions. Because for a while, you were able, oh. able to proc it on minions Oh dear. in its first form. <laughs> uh, we've got preseason coming up as well in a few months, right? As the end of... Oh my... <laughs> Got... It's so bizarre because I feel like I'm, I've like only just really wrapped my head around this last season, and we got another one coming. I'm like, oh wait. I know exactly what you mean. We've had so many changes this season. I hope they go light on the next ones. But either way, that's a few months <laughs> off. We've got a few more important things at hand right here, right now. Being in a very commanding lead in the game one of our series here, quarterfinals. German number one seed versus oh, no. Poland's number one. Oh, no. Colin might be. Nah, he's cool, right? right? Uh, are you sure about right? that? I'm not sure about that. He's getting the taunts off. He's got the backup of his team. And there's the collector from Kenoe. The Galio is joining in. PDW have found their first kill, but at what cost? 
Melanie's jumping away. The front line is too tanky. Kenwi's not even in the fight. They're going to finish up the tower. The damage is going down. And Chayek is actually jumping aboard. He's doing a lot of damage. Steady flash connects on to the back line. Chayek is taken out by Melanie. And here is the curtain call. The collector will start to pay its dues as Kenwi gets the fourth shot off of the cupboard. And he is cashed in on. Almost 10,000 gold lead, 22 minutes into the game. 10 kill advantage to big as well. Dragon Soul spawning in two minutes. PDW found a decent opportunity. Big were a little bit too far forward, a little bit over aggressive. But at this point, it's too little, too late. They can't take advantage of the fight. And it still works out in biggest favor. You're right, Jake. I was maybe a little bit over enthusiastic for color survival here. He doesn't last <laughs> very long. But importantly, big do go pretty ham in this one, right? They go a little bit too far forward. But this guy has just been everywhere in these team fights. He's always able to join in at the right time. And this is not too bad. This is not too bad for PDW. Just they're just a bit too poor, honestly. They're a bit too poor. And importantly as well, Chaik has the Galio ulti. He wants this right here to be someone else, not him, so he can jump on them. And Galio will into the fight. Wasn't able to find that. Instead, big find it all. I mean, that unbreakable was from cupboard was about as unbreakable as an IKEA cupboard. <laughs> He just got melted. Baron gonna get started up here on the side of Berlin International Gaming and PDW, I don't think you wanna contest this. I I I mean I guess you in a way have to, but I don't think you want to. They're gonna know what's going on. See as has no one to jump to, she's gonna get kicked. He's probably just gonna die. What the hell? How did he live? Brunette has to go golden. But it's, he's just got the backup of the rest of his team who can't do anything. Kenny is completely untouched. Here comes the Galio. Color's going to fall to Melanek. And now covered once again. But... Collapsing. Falling apart. As Kenny is gone like an OD is popped. A double kill for Kenny. 15 kills to Big. With only one death on Siaz. It has been a near flawless start to this best of five from our Dark Legion representatives. One kill they away from the perfect the game. That's all it took was that one death on the Siaz. Dirty feeder. I think Big's going to end this game, put themselves one up in the series. Oh, there we go. Tower number two will go down. The next hit will be laid bare, but not before. The KDAs are padded even more. Shayek trying his best to survive 10 kill Jin. 25 minutes into the game and big game one's in the bag and in what fashion did they do it as well bloody hell that was an absolute slaughter by big that was not close at all probably the most one-sided game in the entire e master so far yeah ridiculous stuff right there from start to finish didn't give a single inch over to pdw and if that's any indication of how the rest of the series is going to go, then we might be home for lunch and it's already past lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was... Um, I'm hoping PDW can kind of bounce back from that. I think it was honestly a really good read from them in that first rotation with the the, uh, the pickup on the Silas to obviously match what the Galio was going to be. Um, it felt like, you know, they had a good read on that first half of the jam select and then they got to a point where they realized that all the AD carries are banned away and they went, oh, we just have to go Braum, Ash, but they've yeah. got Rakan already, so this is really hard to play. And it turns out Kedawi, he's not a uh, Tristana one-trick. He's actually quite good at a lot of AD carries and, you know, he's been in the European Regional Leagues for a while and, you know, in the EU Masters circuit for a while. So a, a champion like Jin is something, you know, they'll have he'll have under his belt. It's a champion they're very much capable of playing. So it's obviously a very hard game for them to come back from, but big, you know, we talked about it. Get PDW while they're trying to scale up and get into the game, and that can be your win condition. Anyway, we're going to throw to a break when we're back with the analyst test to talk a little bit about that game number one. So we'll see you in a moment.
Welcome back to the Amazon European Masters, where Big is leading 1-0 against PDW. And um, I don't think I saw too many deaths on Big's side, to be honest. Yeah, it went all right for them. It was a pretty, <laughs> you know, I mean, I would be happy if that was my team, you know. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, I mean, Big looked very, very strong there. Um, and, and we sure have to go start looking at their, their composition at first. Because, um, Dagda, you thought it was a bit too defensive uh, on the side of PDW? Yeah, I just felt like they didn't really give themselves enough opportunities to make aggressive plays, right? Your Chaya could be able to steal away the Galio ult, and then you kind of look and go, right, where do we go? Because you, you don't really want to be playing towards the Shen lane, right? You want the Shen to be joining you in on the bot side or on the mid lane play. But if you're going to be roaming down towards the bot side, there's no real engage support there to try and set you up. So now you're heavily reliant on something like an Ashult into the Lee Sin being the one to set you up. And suddenly that's five members that you've trying to, trying to orchestrate around this bottom side of the map rather than being able to you know, invest one or two people and make that play still stick. I think it was also very interesting that when we look at the ban, the bot lane was attacked very heavily for both sides. Yeah, that is for sure, but uh, just to continue from your point also, Dagda, I feel like these two teams represent, these two compositions represent both of the teams. Having the Galio, we said that Rika wants to push his mid and bleed his pressure into the side lanes. That's exactly what he did. He played for top, he played for bot when he had to, he played around Akabane. And on the other side, you have Chayek onto the Silas, where mm -hmm. you want the Brom to be roaming towards mid. You want the Leeson to be roaming towards your mid lane. And then you've got the Shen ultimate for such insurance if things go bad in this skirmish. I just feel feel like PDW didn't necessarily play to their win conditions because big do what big do best. They just play fast League of Legends. And they brought that down to the bottom side, right? They brought all that attention down yeah. to make sure that, hey, that one lane that we we're kind of talking about, you can look to play around. Yeah, that's not an option anymore. Akabane shut that down from the get-go. And then from that point, they were able to make these plays happen around the map. I mean, looking at this game, um, what you say, we see fast pace big and let it get started on level four already is where Cupid does a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, but it's just not enough. Yeah, I mean, we saw that early Rome to try and set up his team, but there was just, once he got that early scuttle, it was just like, all right, cool, yeah, we're just going to sit around this bot side, we're going to make that play there. Then you had the uh, play that they attempted to make in the top end of the map as well, and Big shut that down as well. Every opportunity that we saw PDW try to make these plays in the map, Big just responded so well. And what was really interesting is that I saw Cubid back at around the three to four minute mark, I think it was, maybe five, and the first thing he purchased was boots, and I'm like, Oh, here we go again. The roams are going to start. Chaik is going to get a lot of attention onto the Silas. We, thought, we saw Dayer yesterday when he got his first kill onto the Silas, how snowbally that was for the entire uh, the entirety of the game and the series indeed. But then Cupid was never allowed to leave his lane. You can't leave an Ash down there when there's a Rakan. You saw the Zinzao could be coming towards the bot side. And if you leave an Ash all alone with a Galio ultimate onto the sides, then it gets really scary. And if you look at this particular play, like, PDW try to play forward, but they just simply can. Like, there is a solid answer on the side of Big, and it is a lot of damage. Yeah, and I think that's the big one for me here, is that when we saw PDW, right, they tried to jump in onto these plays, tried to set them up for themselves, but you then look across the opposite side, right? You have your own Galio ults across the board. You've got a Rakan that can dive in onto the back line of the Ash, Camille that can lock down that Ash. You've got the Shin Zhao to follow up as well. Everything was tall driving onto your main source of damage in the back line. And when you try to answer for that, there's just like, three, four more engaged tools that you've got to try and off. Like, and I find this so interesting because you absolutely dislike the way PDW drafted. Yeah. I kind of like the way PDW drafted because had that been an even footing game, had they been on even gold, and I know that's a lot of Eves to ask, yeah, definitely. but I feel like no one should be able to reach Ash, you've got so much crack control with your ultimate. You've got so much crack control with the Brom. Four melees diving into you. Brom applying passive. You've got the Shen ultimate. If she's hit the fan and they do manage to get onto Ash, you've got a lot of peeling coming in from the Silas who can still gal your ultimate as well. So I felt like the tools were there to keep Ash alive and keep her as a nuisance to put down the damage slowly but surely. But I will agree that, that this big sort of... Um, scaling that we usually see from PDW was just like not a factor. There wasn't one champion like maybe a Gangplank or an Oriana where we're like, now they're going to pop off. Yeah, and it felt like you really had to rely on these like early skirmishes for PDW where you could use an Ashult or have the Shen come down, try and utilize that to get these advantages. But once you started to fall behind, and you, there's just no real 
answer, like your pick tools start to just be taken off the board because as you can see, you're constantly shoved in bot. You're not having any sort of big impact on the map because those ultimates don't have key targets that they're enabling. The rather defensive tools that you're trying to run away from big who are like, there's no getting away from us. We have every tool under the sun to lock you down. Yeah, and I, and I want to look at a particular point in the game. I, I think this is where they use the Rift Herald, they find two picks. Like everything they do just works for them and there's no answer on the side for PDW. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, this was kind of the big fight for me when we got to see in that mid lane around the 1530, I think it was, where we end up having these two clashes of the different styles, and we get to see the attempted engage coming through from uh, PDW, but there's just not enough for Big, and you will see a bit of an earlier skirmish here that kind of synergizes with that as well, right? You, they all try to all in an Akavan, but he's got the control there, he ends up getting the Galio down, and you can see then there's more engage tools, more long range tools with this Jinul that can set up for this re engage pick off members of PDW once more, and we get essentially a repeat of the exact same fight only a couple of minutes later. And I feel like, again, this speaks for itself, right? You play towards the bot side of the map, you leave your mid lane if you're Rika, and you play for the rest of your team. And I felt like this sort of put Chayek behind because he is the star of PDW. 22.8 KDA coming out of the group stage, the least deaths out of anyone coming out of the group stage, and they managed to keep him locked and loaded in lane to the point where he couldn't follow the Galio around, to the point where he couldn't be a nuisance and definitely not a threat. I think Jin's also a very good tool to dictate fights. Like, you have a lot of safe positioning, as you already mentioned, Agda. You can actually complete disrupt team fights, but as soon as a current call comes, you just want to run away. Yeah, and I mean, look, it was great because you'd already gotten that, like, let's buy space tool coming through from the Galio, right? You, you've already forced your, your opponents back, so then you can just open up with the curtain call pretty handily, set up for the Camilles to jump in, the Xinjiao's to follow, you're constantly getting these slows, then you get the Rakan into the mix as well. Like, it's so hard to actually stop the engage when you're being slowed down and there's all this CC on the opposition. Still Trouble, you're a fan of the composition that PDW has showed. How do you think they should tackle this early in the game? Because the way they did it right now didn't really work for them all that well. I feel like they're on red side this time. They're Correct. On, yeah. They're on blue side. They were on blue side and now they're on the red side. So I feel what really did hurt them, I think we saw seven out of ten bands towards the bot lane. And then what they were left with was Ash. Had that been a different pick, maybe a Tristana, maybe a Zaya, something that can possibly land on its own, maybe an Ezreal, whatever that was. But just because they didn't have the pick after the second ban rotation, they fell short into securing one of the CDCs that I feel like would have a lot more impact in the game. So I feel like on the red side, they have the chance to maybe counter pick for top lane if they so wish to play through there, have something more safe for Chayek, and then maybe play even through bot lane. Yeah, and that's the big one for me. I want to see a little bit more from Color. Like this guy, when you look at him back home, he's got a 100% win rate on things like Jace. Like mm -hmm. this is a guy that you know can actually pick up these champions and play them. Instead, we're getting a lot of these tanks. We're getting the Orns, we're getting the Poppies. Now we got the Shen as well. These are not things that you can play around. And when we want Shayek, who's like stealing Galliolds, playing Tifisifei, playing Rises, like actively trying to find moments on the map, I want to see another lane that he can impact, not kind of being stuck in the mid lane, not able to do very much, or a one-dimensional play to bot side that Akabana is shut down from like four minutes into the game. Then on the other side, I mean, Big has won that game very convincingly. What do you think was so good on the side of Big? I felt like... Akapana was everywhere. He was, so he was everywhere. <laughs> he was bot lane, he was mid lane, then he was top. Then suddenly he was in the jungle. Then you open your front door, he's suddenly there, he's ganking you too. Open the he, fridge, he's also there. <laughs> he was an absolute monster on the Zinzao. Uh, and of course, we have to give a lot of props to the champion as well, because he's absolutely broken. But Akabana has mastered the rotations around the map. He was there for the counter ganks. He was there for the proactive ganking. And he was there to back up his lanes when they needed help. And I felt like that Zinzao are always plays in your face and has the correct timing on the map is just something that is very precious to big and let me tell you what, it doesn't stop on the Zinza. <laughs> yeah, I think Ada Cabana has been the shining light for yeah. this team. He's been impeccable, really good understanding of like how to manage waves for his team, where he needs to be to either allow them to push in the wave fully so they can crash, get a reset, or hey, this is how I need to set up this wave for Dragon that's coming up, for myself to get a Scuttle Crab. He always understands what is needed on the map and how to give his team the tools to get into that position. And I mean, we got to see it here, right? There was one kind of lane that you could play around that bot side. He was like, cool, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to give my team the tools that they need and we can just snowball through this early game.
Historically, the Ultra League has always eliminated every single Prime League team, and now Big are leading 1-0, and they might break the spell. Will they be able to continue with that? We'll have to see you there after the break. So see you in a little bit.